Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through the complete collection of the British hardback Star Trek annuals. Now these were first published back in 1969 and they went all the way through to an annual for the next generation in 1991. I think they're fantastic. They predominantly are filled with classic gold key comic reprints with the odd sort of space and non-fiction piece uh, thrown in for good measure. The artwork is quite varied. Some of them are better than others. But I do believe that this is a really great fun set to collect. None of them are expensive. You can find them all for less than £10, even in really top shape. Most of them for less than a fiver. And I think they represent great value for money, considering they're 50 years old now. So I do hope you enjoy looking through this collection as much as I did. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. So this is the very first British Star Trek annual, and uh, this one's dated 1969. It was originally priced at 10 shillings and sixpence. And uh, this one contains the first three Gold Key American comics in reprint form. So the one from issue one, The Planet of No Return, issue two, The Devil's Isle of Space, and issue three's Invasion of the City Builders. And then they were all pulled together into this British annual. So the thing was, the Gold Key comics were never released in the UK. We did have some Star Trek comics in reprint form, and we had some original homegrown content in things like TV comic later on. But those Gold Key ones were never systematically reprinted over here, except in the annuals. This is how we, uh, how we in the UK got to see them. Now, uh, Unlike a lot of annuals of this period, you see this one here has got like a, a little fax on space, little quiz, um, and this one's got a little board game as well. Most of the Star Trek annuals aren't like that, and they're just like straight reprints. But that was typical of a, of a sort of British annual, particularly one which had a sort of space connection. It would be, uh, you know, there would be like a space sort of quiz or a space crossword or word search. The artwork very much varies. So... You know what you're going to get with the reprinted comics because it's the standard gold key, but everything else varies. So like this title page would have been unique to the British annual. The splash page would be unique, although that does get used again. And then of course the covers would be unique. Um, this first one, fairly easy to get hold of. Um, nice big bold graphics on it. Very, very nice. And uh, the great thing about these Star Trek annuals is none of them are that expensive to actually uh, collect. So I managed to get, I had a couple already, uh, you know, from when I was young, uh, but it took me less than a year to track down, you know, really nice copies of, of all of these. And none of them cost me more than a fiver. Literally none of them cost more than that. So bear that in mind, you can get a really good run of these 50 year old books, uh, relatively cheap. So that's book one anyway. So here is book two. This one's dated 1970. And uh, this one features three more stories from Gold Key. So from issue four, The Peril of Planet Quick Change. Issue five, The Ghost Planet. And issue six is When Planets Collide. And then there's a few other sort of interesting little features, a bit like the other one. There's the back cover there. Original price, 62 and a half pence or 12 and six. And it's your standard gold key comics there in reprinted form. And if you've never read the gold keys, because they are quite expensive these days, um, this is a really good way to read them. I like the size of them as well. And these hardbacks are just, just really nice. They're just they're great additions. Nice artwork on that one. It does vary. I mean, you know, I don't think any of these are by any of the, the really top name uh, world distributors artists, but um, some are better than others. So, you know, I'd say that's probably not the worst likeness that we'll see of Kirk and Spock, uh, but <laughs> you be the judge, you be the judge. 
Now, 1971 didn't actually get a traditional annual like the first two there. It had this, which was the television picture storybook. So once again, um, it's a little bit thinner than a normal annual. So it's only got two strips inside. It uh, has the one from issue one again, The Planet of No Return, and um, a story from issue 10, Scepter of the Sun. And then the uh, little smattering of... Uh, of facts so this is literally just you've seen that before it's just like reprinted stuff in this television picture book style quite scarce this one but it is just you know it's like it was knocked up on the cheap but that one fits in there so that's that's where that one actually lives in the uh, the star trek annual story and then the next one we've got is straight into the 1972 annual and this is uh now clearly dated on the front jacket there so let's uh, move those over there a moment so these are clearly dated and uh much better artwork on that i mean that does uh, certainly the william shatner looks excellent and they've still not quite got spock right have they <laughs> it's the enterprise on the back there not a bad little rendition of that one. I mean, you have to wonder what sort of reference they had um, to go on, these guys, if they were just copying maybe what was in the comic strips, possibly. Um, but once again, this one was 30 pence, the original UK price, and included the stories from issues 7, 8, and 9 of the Gold Key comics, uh, The Voodoo Planet, Youth Trap, and The Legacy of Lazarus. Once again, the questionable British artwork there. McCoy looks awful, but the Spock, not too bad. And uh, Uhura and um, Sulu up there, not too bad either. Pretty cool stuff. That was the 72. Nice black spine there. Now the 73 annual, this was another one which ironically ended up being a tail end one. So one that took me a little bit of time to get. It wasn't the last one for me to get, that was the 1974, but this one was still fairly scarce. Um, uh, 70 pence was the British cover price. Really, really nice uh, versions of Kirk and Spock and we've got the Galileo 7 there. Um, not a bad jacket at all, that one. Not bad at all, that. And this one's got three stories inside, as usual, from issues 11, 12, and 13 of the Gold Key comics. The Brain Shockers, The Flight of the Buccaneer, and uh, Dark Traveller. Then your usual Gold Key fare. Literally no attempt at all made to uh, have any uh, like puzzles or space facts, or even a crossword. Uh, very much uh, straightforward reprints. Must have been very easy to put together. So this is the last one that I tracked down from the British Roman. This was the 1974 annual. Possibly candidate for absolute worst rendition of Spock in the entire run. Not very good at all, I'm afraid. I don't, not a fan of this artwork. It just looks sort of muddy, doesn't it? The sort of colours on it. Not the greatest, I'm afraid, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. And uh, once again, this one had three gold key stories from issues 14, 15 and 16. The Enterprise Mutiny, Museum at the End of Time and Day of the Inquisitors. It cost 75 pence when it was new. My copy has actually been um, uh, price clipped, but that's not too bad. again three more gold key reprints I have to wonder what Kirk's doing there I don't know if he's uh, holding a microphone an electronic toothbrush or he's about to suck on a bong but um, <laughs> it's not the greatest picture is it dear oh dear Yes, not a highlight, you could say, in the world of Star Trek. However, they are what they are. And this is, you know, if you lived in the UK, this is all you had to play with. 
So next, we've got the 1975 annual. Now this is brilliant because this solves the problem. It just puts a picture on the front. Finally, they realise that no one in the world distributors um, uh, stable can actually draw Spock. So they just stuck a picture on it in the end. And uh, that looks miles and miles better than uh, what they've been attempting up to this point. That Kirk's all right on the back there. But that is, it's just, you know, surely that's sold better than the travesty that was on the 1974 annual, you know? Uh, so once again, very, very standard inside, just three more stories. Uh, the original price had gone up now to 90 pence. And uh, you have the stories from issues 17, 21 and 24 of the Gold Key comic. It was the Cosmic Caveman, the Mummies of Hytus 7 and the Trial of Captain Kirk. I vaguely remember having this one as a kid. See, that's so much better, isn't it? It really, really is. It's like they've got a different designer in or someone who actually knows what they're doing. It's the best one yet from the Star Trek stable, the 75. I'm gonna slip that one on top because it's such a good one. Now, the 76 annual is actually the first one that I definitely remember having as a kid. I definitely, definitely owned this one, the 76 annual. This one and the Doctor Who guaranteed I had these when I was growing up. And uh, I remember it very vividly. They've gone back to the, um, the artwork covers, but the actual likenesses aren't too bad at all. Pretty good um, enterprise on the back there as well. And it keeps to the, uh, the, the standard form, but only two stories this time. So we've lost a bit of page count. Um, the price has gone up to one pound. And uh, there's just two stories from issue 27 and issue 30 of the Gold Key Run, Ice Journey and Death of a Star. Let's have a little look through this one. And this one's got a little bit of a sci-fi fact, which is always fun. Like a bit of a more of a return to form. Star facts, yeah. The game. So this is what annuals used to be like. It's just the Star Trek ones. You know, they just seem to have been shortchanged a bit, you know, a crossword there. It is what it is. It is what it is, but it's a nice one all the same. And particularly nostalgic because I remember owning that one as a kid and uh, reading it to death. So the next one we've got is the 1977 annual. Now, like the Doctor Who annual from that time, and uh, in fact, I think all the World Distributors annuals from 77, they were in a much larger format. So if we just grab the 76, which is in standard size, you get to see that there's about a centimetre at the top and about one and a half, two centimetres to the, to the width. So these are considerably bigger. And it's really weird because when you look at people's annuals collections, um, these 77 annuals always stand out and uh, they are very, very frustrating. <laughs> um, but this has only got two stories in, one from issue 10, Scepter of the Sun, and one from issue 34, the Psycho Crystals. And then it has got a bit of a mixture of games and puzzles and stuff like that, which is cool. As you can see, because the pages are so big, they haven't expanded the gold key artwork. They've just pretty much put it down page for page with a great big border around it, which is a bit of a cop out really, isn't it? But it is what it is. This was, uh, you know, 40 odd years ago now. And it's a historical curiosity, I think you could call these, um, in the world of Star Trek. Now this next one, the 70th, seems to be a very, uh, very common one. And uh, they have continued the trend of just having two stories. It's got a cover price of £1.35. Good to see Kirk and Spock actually get a, uh, a little picture on the front cover. That's cool. And this reprints Gold Keys number 38 and 39. One of our captains is missing and prophet of peace. 
And as I said, these have got a little bit of a mixture of, um, you know, cartoons and um, uh, the odd facts and games and stuff like that, just to uh, keep them interesting, because that really was how most annuals were. It's just the early Star Trek annuals seem to have been hard done by, and have not had any sort of, um, or hardly any, uh, of that sort of thing included in them, which is a bit of a shame. Now, I'm just going to pull the camera a bit just to look at these last few. So here's the 79 annual, and uh, I think this has got some of the best looking artwork of the entire series. Also, interestingly, it's almost as if the 78 one is where Star Trek annuals peaked. And after that, I think they could start to get a little bit harder to get hold of. But I do think the 79 one here is really, really nice artwork. Um, one of the best uh, in the run. Um, £1.50 and uh, it contains two gold key stories, the ones from number 36, A Bomb in Time, and number 40, Furlough to Fury. Uh, this one's got about 10 pages of uh, additional sort of material beyond the gold key comics. Uh, quizzes and what have you, quizzes and uh, space facts. Little, little game there, some jokes. Puzzle, maze game, that sort of stuff. It's a miniature board game as well. Cool stuff. Once again, this is the bit that was done by the British people. So not that good. Alien, nothing to do with Star Trek. Pretty awful. The cover, however, beauty. That's a really, really nice painted jacket, that one. And uh, certainly one of the best. That was the 79 annual. Then the 1980 annual is this one. It's almost like more of the same. But once again, a pretty good likeness of um, of Leonard Nimoy, perhaps the best that we've seen so far. Um, Kirk certainly looks a little bit more, um, well, I don't know, he looks a bit short, doesn't he? And maybe that's just me. Um, but a nice annual all the same. The date's gone, but this is definitely the 1980 annual. So this one contains three gold key strips from issues 54, 55 and 56. Sport of Knaves, a world against itself and no time like the past. But unlike the last couple of annuals, it appears as if they've dropped the additional bits and pieces that we wanted, like the crosswords and the puzzles and that. This is straightforward reprint, so I guess this is uh, why we only got the three, we got three stories instead of two, because they've decided just to do three straight reprints, which maybe it was easier. I mean, how difficult would it have been to knock out three reprints? Put the book, put the comics together, create a brand new front cover which is what they've done and then the inside page which is this is once again because this is original british it's just not very good look at the state of them they all look about 90. um but that's a shame but generally speaking the actual packaging of that one isn't too bad at all now obviously by this time the first star trek movie had come out so we've got the annual for star trek the motion picture so this was the very next one and this was sort of dated about 8081. And it's not World Distributors, it's Marvel Grand Dreams. And that is because, obviously you've got the photo cover there. And that is because it's like the comic book adaption, which Marvel produced for Star Trek The Motion Picture. But it's in the British uh, British annual format. And it is fantastic. It's what a way, it's the entire movie in comic strip form. And uh, in the States, we've already seen that pocket books released a, a, a paperback version of the uh, Marvel Comics adaption. But over here, we have this hardback, and Marvel Grand Dreams did exactly the same with um, uh, Star Wars Empire and Jedi for Star Wars. A nice little, um, you know, photo insert. You just didn't get this with the, <laughs> with the World Distributors ones, did we? How amazing is that? Really, really nice. As well as, as you can see, the full adaption of the actual movie which is fantastic, really, really cool. I love it, absolutely love it. So the artists were Dave Cockrum and Klaus Janssen. Marv Wolfman was the script editor. Yeah, great stuff, really good that. 
real nice memento of Star Trek The Motion Picture, um, which is I still think is a great, great movie. And then the next one, of course, would have been For the Wrath of Khan. Now, uh, this one came out in 1983. I don't know why they thought to put the, ra the title in like inverted commas but there you go it's not my best copy of this one it's actually on one of my up it's on my list of uh, books to upgrade but um, for the time being i'm going to um going to take it <laughs> now this one is not world distributors it's not marvel it's uh, stafford pemberton publishing so it's a different company that have got the license for this and um, this is not sadly an adaption of the wrath of Khan in Star Trek for in uh, comic strip form, which would have been fantastic. Uh, but once again, this is actually uh, two gold key reprints, numbers 59 and 61, which hadn't been published at that time. So you've got from issue 59 to Ur is Vulcan, and from issue 61, Operation Kong Game. But they have interspersed it with stills from it, as you can see, The Wrath of Khan, which is pretty good. So they've sort of loosely, loosely tied it in to the second movie, but really, um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty loose tie, isn't it? Um, it's a shame, but they never did the comic adaption of the second film. At least to my knowledge, they didn't. Um, but as I said, quite scarce, quite expensive, and uh, one which uh, I am on the lookout for a, uh, a better copy of if one comes my way. So here is the uh, 86 annual. And this was the very last one for the classic Star Trek series that got produced in the UK. Um, no horrible rendition of Kirk or Spock, but not a particularly nice rendition of the Enterprise there. But I guess it is what it is. Um, once again, I think this one's quite scarce, the 86 annual. It includes two gold keys, issues 36 and 40. And that was a, a bomb of t a bomb in time and furlough to fury, which had already been reprinted in the UK. Price has gone up to three pounds twenty five. The paper's glossy now rather than matte, but it is just the straightforward gold key reprints. The later issues, the usual mixture of star facts and you know, there's a little muzzle, uh, maze game and puzzles and stuff like that. By this time, these are starting to look very, very old and. Uh, it is what it is. I suppose it's a historical piece, but it's not the greatest. And um, by this time, the Gold Key comics had lost their shine as well, to be honest. But there we are. That was the very last of the classic Star Treks. But we've actually got one more book to look at. And this was because by a few years later, just a few years later, the next generation came along. And that had just the one annual, which was published by Marvel. And Marvel, when Next Gen came out, there was a six-issue miniseries. Um, and I believe, I believe that that's where this, uh, there's a couple of issues in this, and that's where these have been reprinted from, even though the front cover is a season two one because it's got Dr. Pulaski in. Um, so £4.50 this one was, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's dated 92, although I believe you could get this one actually in 1991. And this is the one and only British annual for Star Trek The Next Generation. So I thought, well, it'd be crazy to miss it out since we're doing all the other British annuals in this video. And uh, quite nice. Got some, you know, concept drawings. That's pretty good, isn't it? We've never seen this before in a Star Trek annual. The weapons and technology, some costumes as well, which is pretty cool. Concept art. Profile of the Klingons. Yeah, you can see these are sort of advanced sketches. That's obviously Wesley and Deanna Troy. Some stills from the actual episode, special effects. Huh. Interesting that they included that one, but the only way you could actually see the episode was on video, on home video. It was never broadcast in the BBC. I don't know if it has been broadcast since, but that was that exact scene was censored over here when these were being shown on the BBC. Too gory. And look at the shellcraft. It's nice, isn't it? Nice little, uh, nice little angle. This look at the Borg. Yeah, shame the artwork's a bit rough, but it's of its time. You know, it is of of its time, and the the 
the Marvel and then the later the DC comics were um, of variable quality. Um, but there's some good stuff in there. And that was the very last of the, the Star Trek annuals. And um, what a collection they make, don't they? They really, really do. And as I said, none of them really too difficult to get. Um, I think that very first TV picture storybook is scarce. And because it's not really an annual. And there are some other books that we'll be looking at in a future video. There's some pop-up books. Um, and there's, um, yeah, well, there's a whole host of non-fiction books which came out during this period. And um, I have been picking them up book by book. And uh, it's, it's going to make a fascinating video in itself. But yeah, certainly uh, don't be put off by the fact that there's, you know, a dozen or so books there to get. Because they're actually really, really easy. And when you think that's a snapshot from 50 odd years ago i think they do make quite a fun little set to get together so there you go i hope you enjoyed looking through my collection of vintage star trek annuals they certainly do make quite an interesting set to pull together and uh as i said not too difficult at least not too difficult if you're in the uk um if you have enjoyed today's video don't forget to check out some of my most recent videos where i've uh, covered other aspects of star trek in early publishing history, such as the James Blish books, the photo novels, and the early pocket books as well. And uh, you'll find those in a dedicated Star Trek playlist. Until next month then, thank you very much for watching today. Live long and prosper, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.